problem is, and that I've always had in conventional cancer care is they'll take an image in time. And this is the best way I can describe it. If you have a field full of weeds and those weeds are cancer cells, we can burn it with radiation. We can throw chemicals at it with chemotherapy, or we can literally manually pluck it out like surgery. At some point, hopefully you take a picture of that field and there's no weeds and you go, look, you're cancer free. Look at this beautiful field. It's all grass now. But no one ever, ever addresses the dirt. No one ever addresses what is is going on under the Mm -hmm. surface. And we never did that. Hello, you beautiful bluebirds, and welcome back to another episode of Deja Blue. Today, I am pretty excited because we have a real life doctor in the building. Dr. Christian Gonzalez is in the house, and um, how you've come into my life is um, been pretty magical from start to finish, even well, not to finish, from start to now. Mm-hmm. Um, you came over for dinner the other night and we all got to drop in with your partner and with Andre and myself and really got to know each other and just like get a, a much deeper feel for the magic in what you're weaving. And then I've also just been like checking out your videos online and the wisdom that you're dropping and the knowledge that you've uh, you've devoted yourself to, to be able to share in a good way. You're also a host of a podcast, Heal Thyself, with many, many magical guests that are talking all from, what was the range of your topics that you're covering on your podcast? Oh man, everything. Anything that deals with physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. So you can think about like authenticity work. You can think about choosing the best matcha. You can think about (laughs) muscle fitness, everything. Amazing. Yeah. So you definitely want to check that out. All of the link and the information is going to be in the show notes at the end of this. But also just as you as an individual, you have this incredible presence of the ability of lighting up a room when you're in it. You've got like, you're a Leo. Mm. We've got that like Leo flair, like let's go. (laughs) And then also like super anchored in the 3D with science and knowledge and um, a deeper understanding of how to tap into the potential of the human experience and biohacking. And you came in this morning and said that you started off your day with with sauna and a cold plunge and gym and and just really being able to actually utilize the magic of inner energy engineering our external reality. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to get you on the podcast today and have a chat with you and just pick your brains and to peel back the layers of your knowledge and your wisdom to share with the bluebirds um, a little bit more about you. So Christian, Dr. G, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's amazing. You know, I I have some deja blue. We we had our dinner on this very table and you infuse that dinner with love. And Mm. I, I, I thought about after we left, I was like, no, that that was way better than if like I got it at Chipotle, <laughs> right? Or any of Tokaya. It right. was infused with love because there was intention behind the food, mm-hmm. which has been so motivating to me because now I've been cooking more of my own food. Since the dinner? Since the dinner. Uh, I've been cooking more of my own food and then doing my own little hand ritual over it where I just do a little ohm on it. Uh, but um, someone someone had mentioned right after synchronicity, right? That the love you put into your food, you put right back in your body. And I said, yeah. damn. Why not think about that? Because I've made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on the run, yeah. eating them in my car with no love. And then uh-huh. I get a stomach ache. But right. man, there's like, I just wanted to open up saying that uh. like, that was a beautiful meal. And um, Well, now- you said it to me at the gathering. Yeah. You said, we're, I said, we're going to have dinner soon. And you were like, yes. And, and make sure it's full of love. And I was like, ding. Ding, ding, love dinner. And so I had a vision of myself in the kitchen and with every chop of the vegetables or like mixing the cookie dough mm-hmm. uh, mixed together with my mm-hmm. hands to be in like a really heightened state of joy mm-hmm. and to be playing my favorite music. And I was dancing while I was cooking yeah, that's and, how I was it should be. Thing and I cleaned the whole house and lit some uh, incense. And, mm-hmm. and so then when you came, I was like, I did it. <laughs> it was almost like a classroom assignment. It was fantastic it's food. Use the love into the food. And then belly's happy. Belly's happy. And I, happy. I was just thinking, happy. you know, talking about the dancing, I grew up with a Puerto Rican mom and she was blasting salsa music every time she was making food for us. Oh. And, and I think about how like warm and held that food felt, right? Like it was yeah. just like, oh, this is mom food. You know that, mm-hmm. you know, when you go home and you have a home cooked meal, mm-hmm. but there was so much love in it, right? Mm-hmm. It, wasn't, it wasn't only for her kids, 
But man, she was in the zone. The salsa music was her passion. So she's infusing that right into the food while she's exactly. flipping a pancake for me. Yeah. And then like, it, it just tastes like the best pancake ever. Because nothing like mama's pancake. There's nothing like mama's pancake. She loves pancake. her baba more than anything in the world. Yeah. So that, so I, I really, a lot of listeners and viewers can ask themselves, am I infusing love into my food? Uh-huh. Because the body's responding to those inputs. There's right. some, there's inputs to me. I love science, but there's inputs that we cannot see at all. Mm -hmm. We can't measure. And those are the inputs that we feel. Mm -hmm. And it comes in our food and it comes in everything we do in our mm -hmm. lives. So really incredible way to open it. Yeah. And I, I love, um, I love that you received so much inspiration from the dinner. Because you said that you built an altar. You got an altar at home now. Oh my God, yes. You're cooking more. Yes. Your girlfriend's now not eating as much sugar. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is, for me, it's like, even though I know my stuff when it comes to natural medicine, mm -hmm. I still feel like I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. So even if someone is telling me something that I may have heard, but it's worked for them, but they tell me from a different angle that I never explored, I'll always be open to that, right? Mm -hmm. So... I mean, why, why, why be closed off and thinking you know everything? Mm -hmm. So to be open is such a magical key mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if you're open, then you can change your life. Mm -hmm. You can elevate your consciousness, right? So I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm an expert meditator. I've been meditating since undergrad. And then I hear your partner, Andre, tell me, you know, in the mornings he's meditating, empty stomach. And I'm so inspired. I was like, wow, you're meditating that long? I was like, yeah, you know what? I need to be doing it. So that's why I got the altar and just like sacred space. And, you know, it's interesting. I got all that stuff ready to meditate in my home. And then I looked at the gene keys. You did. That we, oh, you that read we the, the free. About. I read my holotropic uh, profile. Uh -huh. And in it said, you absolutely, and I don't know what the pillar for my health was or the pillar of my life, mm -hmm. but you absolutely need your own space. Yeah. You it, And you could be, it says you're extroverted, but you need your own space. And I was yeah. like, whoa, that's crazy. Because I just dedicated you know, some funds on Etsy to get my own space and now it's coming. So I'm really excited about that. Mm, well, I'm okay. So uh, it brings me so much joy that you came to dinner, you received and felt the love in the food. You were inspired by the altar in the meditation game. You got into the gene keys and uh, now eating less sugar across the board in yeah. the house. Yeah. And yet like you have, cut, you have so much wisdom when it comes to um, the naturopath medicine mm -hmm. and, um, and, and all Ultimately, you're a doctor, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it reminds me of kind of like this mug. Ignore the writing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if this mug it was empty, then there's it can be filled with so much more. Mm -hmm. But when the the mug is full, there's no more room for mm -hmm. any more information to be filled in. Mm -hmm. So if you came in like, well, I'm a doctor and I know everything, right. then you've not absorbed any inspiration from the time in your experience of actually there's always, always, and will never ever be an end to the things that we can learn in no, this life. Exactly. And so that's really refreshing. Um, and I was just giggling with Chelsea earlier because I was like recommending uh, your your girlfriend to do a stool sample so she can pinpoint. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't believe I was just telling a doctor like <laughs> the recommendations for what your girlfriend you're like, should. You're like, have you, have you thought about a stool sample? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, which one do you use? <laughs> but it, but it was, it was, it was nice. You know, yeah. it was like, I, I felt the intention. So I, really got, cool. I got excited. And then uh, yeah, Dr. Blue and Dr. G having Dr. a conversation in the kitchen. One's a little bit more knowledgeable than no, the no, other. It's, 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 it's <laughs> we'll okay. let you decide who. Yeah, yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit more about yourself and how you got into, um, into being a doctor and um, what was the, the pull for you and, and what was the study like? And just, just to share a little bit of the backstory of where mm -hmm. this information came from. Man, when I was, I did undergraduate in New Jersey at Rutgers University, it's a big public school. And when I got in there, I thought I wanted to be a businessman. So I, I uh, majored in economics and I took all those business classes, but somewhere in between I said, well, I kind of like helping people too, mm -hmm. you know? So I started thinking about in what ways I can help people. And I didn't want to go into uh, conventional medicine because at the time I saw it for what it was, really powerful, especially if there's an emergent care situation, mm -hmm. uh, really powerful at helping really serious diseases, but also missing the boat when it comes to preventative mm -hmm. or, or any other things that we can do for our body. So um, up till that point, I always was really into nutrition and making sure that my body was healthy. So I ended up actually going to wow. dental school because I have my own backstory about um, really crooked teeth and how that messes up your confidence and how it can affect your smile and your smile affecting your whole being. So mm -hmm. it really took a toll on me. So I went to dental school for about a year and a half. But then when I, when I was in dental school, my mom got diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So um, 
I came back and I was, it's my first experience with cancer too. And I was like 22 years old Mm -hmm. and I came back and you know, my mom's pale and she's skin and bones. And I'm like, what is happening here? Like, this is only two months I've been Mm -hmm. gone and I come back for winter break. So then I start going to the visits with her and I was just really put off. I was put off at the way they saw her care, right? It was basically come in, here's the medication you're taking, the uh, conventional cancer care, which I'm not against, but also conventional cancer care therapies you're taking, but completely missing everything else, right? Like, so in particular, I asked, I was like, well, what should she, he, she be eating? And because she was losing weight, she needed calorically dense foods. But the suggestions were, I, I was so put off by hearing like pizza, she can eat whatever she wants, cookies, cake. And at the time I was into nutrition. So I knew that mm-hmm. like that amount of sugar cannot be helping her body. Could, it's definitely inflammatory. I said, forget this. They gave her these drinks boosted and sure to go home with, which I have a big problem with. I, and I've always had a problem with this, but they're super high in sugar. They ha- they're super processed, genetically modified ingredients, just all this crap in there that, that is leading to the inflammatory environment of which is feeding the cancer. So I, it was so backwards in that moment. I'm sitting there and I'm like, what is happening? Mm. Is this how it is? So I started taking over her nutritional care and making her all these drinks, calorically dense, high fat, high protein, um, high carb drinks, just whatever can get some calories into her. She got better. uh, And then I was under the impression that many people are, right? We beat cancer, right? Cancer's done. And she's fine, right? Because she gained her weight back. Her hair was coming back. Her energy was back. So for me, it was done. There was no more cancer. Mm -hmm. It was like one and done, right? They took care of it and we took care of it. The problem is, and that I've always had in conventional cancer care is they'll take an image in time. And this is the best way I can describe it. If you have a field full of weeds and those weeds are cancer cells, we can burn it with radiation. We can throw chemicals at it with chemotherapy, or we can literally manually pluck it out like surgery. At some point, hopefully you take a picture of that field and there's no weeds and you go, look, you're cancer free. Look at this beautiful field. It's all grass now. But no one ever, ever addresses the dirt. No one ever addresses what is the, what is going on under the mm-hmm. surface. And we never did that because mm-hmm. I, I was under the impression. I mean, I was handling our cancer care, but I was 22 years old. Mm-hmm. We never did that. So it came back about a year and a half later with a vengeance. And that's what happens when you do not address physically, mentally, emotionally cancer it comes back with a vengeance, unfortunately. And at that time, no therapies are going to help. And that's what happened. She was stage four, went to her brain and she passed away mm-hmm. at the same time. I was learning about naturopathic medicine. I'm in school, dental school, and naturopathic comes out of nowhere because she tells me to read this book and it says ND on the front. And I go, oh my God, how can this book company make such a big mistake? It's supposed to say MD, not ND. So I go home and research, what, what does this mean, ND? And I went into natu- I saw all about naturopathic medicine and this is why I got the tattoo of intuition on my wrist. Because when I started reading about it, from toe to my head, chills just a a massive tidal waves buzzing like and i'm like what is happening like it feels like i took a tequila shot at the time i was like how am i drunk without drinking alcohol Mm -hmm. and in that moment i knew that my soul was talking to me Mm -hmm. and i left and i ended up going into school but my first year of school she passed away but i also got the courage to then want to work with cancer patients Mm -hmm. so that set the stage of really like this whole process of finishing school, going into cancer residency, seeing thousands of cancer patients, coming out, seeing patients again, myself, and then comes in environmental medicine. When I looked at the whole of cancer, we know a few things, smoking, drinking, genetics play a role, just about 10% only, 90% is the rest, smoking, drinking, nutrition, right? And then I started thinking about what the heck else is going on, right? Mm -hmm. No one talks about the environmental aspect. No one talks about it because we don't feel it immediately. You can live in a home that's off-gassing a ton of chemicals, right? With couches, beds, cleaning supplies. You can put lather on cosmetics and lather on lotions, right? You can be drinking from plastic all day. You don't feel that. But over the years, that cup fills up as we were talking about, like an empty Mm -hmm. cup. And then it causes disease like cancer. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, why am I not empowering people? And the inspiration was in this young... uh, uh, she was a beautician and she came in and she had, she, when she not only was working at with a bunch of chemicals at work, she had tattoos from her neck down to her foot. It was one of the most covered tattoos. She was a 24 year old girl, stage four breast cancer. And I said, what the hell is going on? I tested her and it was through the roof, the chemicals that are found 
at the salon and also the heavy metals from her yeah, tattoos. And, and for me, that changed my whole aspect about cancer because I started thinking about cancer as more, is cancer just a body's adaptation to the condition it's given versus being quote unquote an enemy, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's very disempowering when we think we're fighting an enemy mm. rather than it being creating in our body. If it's creating in our body, then we have to think about why is the body creating cancer and what do we do about it? How do we work with the body to get it back into balance so there's no cancer. cancer. Mm -hmm. So it's a very powerful thought process that I had. And then came the mental, emotional, spiritual part. Mm -hmm. There is so much, so much that people hold in. And I started reading that different, different, uh, deep in like the South American shaman, shamans in South America believe that it's just all of this held in, right? With our ancestral or through your life, held in traumas that we hold in and it builds and it eats us up. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was even shocked because I was like, why isn't anyone addressing that part? So then came that whole process, the mental, emotional, the spiritual, environmental medicine, and then as a whole, looking at cancer that way. And, and I stopped seeing patients, but I, I, my, my goal is to empower people to have a better understanding that just because your mom had cancer doesn't mean you are going to have it, you know, and mm -hmm. it's rampant. One in three people, one in three men by the time we're like 50 and one in two, I'm sorry, one in two women, one in three men have cancer. Sorry. One in three women, one in two men will have cancer. That means me, between me and my brother, statistically speaking, That's one of us will have cancer. That's a shocking statistic. By, by, by 2050. So... Why? Why aren't we really, you right. know? And I think a lot of these funds that are going into race for the cure or curing cancer, they're misguided, right? We're, we're looking for something to suppress what the body is trying to do, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the way I see cancer care, and, and look, it will save a life, but it's only half of the battle, mm -hmm. right? I've, I've worked in a cancer hospital. Chemo radiation surgery have, have saved a tumor from impinging on a very important vital function. But at some point, there's, there has to be more done. So if we think about how the body is working and creating the cancer, then we can work with the body to get rid of it, mm -hmm. right? It's a very powerful thing. But with that understanding, I've seen many people heal. And I've seen medical miracles mm -hmm. from doctors who approach cancer the same way. Now, mm -hmm. if you have cancer, go see your, I'm not saying go, go, don't go see a conventional doctor. Go see a conventional doctor, get your diagnosis, do what you need to, but understand that's only half the battle. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And there you go. That's how I got into it. The most long-winded way I could ever say, but no, that's it's, it. it's so beautiful to understand the context and also just recognizing like where your passion for, for, for what this comes from and in your journey with your mother and, um, how it feels so heart forward with what it is that you're doing because it, it's, it's touched your immediate um, your immediate family and there was another way and now you've devoted your life's work to be able to provide that other way for others and to, mm -hmm. to illuminate through knowledge, wisdom, through your podcast, through the people that you're working with and, and for coming on this podcast as well and sharing your wisdom. So it really is lovely to hear the whole context oh, of why you choose to do what you do today. And it really feels like the heart is fully in it. Um, it gets me thinking, okay, living in the city, in, a, you know, a, a, an average house. Um, I'm curious if you have any insights or hacks or things that are, like you said, over time mm -hmm. wearing down, but in the moment, you're not going to realize it, um, where, you know, like, like microwaves or mm -hmm. sunscreen or a certain ingredient in makeup, or how can we start to actually have some like knowledge around these pieces that are everyday uses that are so like brushed, you know, under the, uh, mm -hmm. under the carpet and like not even looked at, but actually if you just have some knowledge or awareness around it, we can start eliminating the toxins in our immediate environment. Mm. That's a great question because it's really empowering when you can do those things, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a, a fine line between empowering and really instilling fear, right? And I try to really be on the empowering point. I don't want to overwhelm people. So this is what I say. Because home exposures or home toxins are a little bit over time, that means you don't have to change everything the next day, right? That can also be a little bit over time, but understand that each intervention you make is going to be really powerful. I start with the bed. <laughs> and if like, if you're on a budget, then you can work up to that. But I think the bed is one of the most important interventions. Why? Because we're on it mm -hmm. for six, seven, eight hours a day, right? For years on end. The problem with beds is that 
if you think about a foam mattress, they're largely polyurethane. Mm -hmm. And polyurethane not tends to off gases and we breathe it in, right? So those chemicals that off gas are known to affect your nervous system, affect your immune system, affect your hormones and be carcinogenic, meaning they can lead to cancer. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty wild statement to ask, is your bed causing your cancer? But I think it's a valid statement. If you think about you sleeping on a bed that's off gassing over and over and over while your face is on it. So really, really important topic to think about is the bed first. Now, again, if you're on a budget, start making the small things then, right? Think about what's in your cabinet, right? If you have a bunch of, if you've got your shampoo at CVS or Walgreens, all these conventional places, right? And there's a, there's a concept of greenwashing before I get into it. And the concept simply is like you and I, if we created a shampoo, right? Mm -hmm. And we put, we put a leaf on it, a waterfall on it, and said, Blues Naturals, approved by Dr. G. But then in the back, there are all these chemicals. It's a big problem. But guess what? I'm like, they Dr. Can, G is a fraud. A fraud, right? <laughs> but they can market it however they want. Right. And the problem is people are falling for that green. Right. They just see it and just grab it. Exactly. And I'm like, oh, it's natural. It's, it's natural. green. The buzzwords, that's what it says. Green, eco-friendly, natural, right? Um, I wish I could even think of all the ke chemical free, but not really, right? It's, mm -hmm. we, we have to understand what to do. So before I say anything, I want everyone to check on the Environmental Working Group, ewg.org. They have different databases, right? They have a, a clean uh, cleaning database for cleaning products. They also have a personal care one called the Skin Deep database. Now, go on the website, look under your, let's start with the sink. Take some of your cleaning supplies, right? You might have Mr. Clean, you might have some Tide, right? You might have Fabuloso, which is big in the Latin communities, right? And, and type it in and type it in and see the letter grade. Most likely it's going to be a D or an F, right? But it'll tell you why too on five different criteria, plus a little bit of a summary as to why uh, mm -hmm. uh, overall. But you'll see, can affect the hormones, can affect the immune system, known to cause cancer, destroys our ecosystem, and you'll see a lot of these conventional products are going to get D's and F's. So really, when I started my show, it was a big tool I used because I cross-referenced a lot of these products. And then I talked about better products. And this goes for sunscreen, uh, lotions, deodorants, shampoos, conditioners, mm -hmm. bronzer, concealer, whatever yeah. it is, lipstick. You can cross-reference on EWG pretty much anything. And they have such a really big database. It's growing all the time right? because they're adding it on. But also the nice thing is that they have EWG verified products. So those are a full A plus A's and you know this is much safer. So look in your bathroom, look under your sink and think about what's there. Look at it, cross-reference it and go, okay, I'm going to finish this. But now I'm going to look on EWG and verify which ones I can move to, mm -hmm. right? My shampoo, for example. Oh man, like this, this is full of parabens. This is full of fragrance, which is an umbrella term for a thousand different chemicals or hundreds can be really affecting my hormones. I want to have a kid. It can be affecting my fertility. Who, what, what fertility doctor is saying, have you checked what's in your bathroom? Because it's a very, very valid thing to say. So do that. These, these chemicals are messing with your fertility. Uh, they Some can affect them. absolutely 1000% male and female fertility. So let's say a couple has a problem getting, getting pregnant. Uh, a big topic of conversation would be alcohol, of course, getting off alcohol, fitness, how you're eating. But not a lot of doctors are even talking about BPA, right? The chemical that is in plastic mm. that, that absolutely affects your hormones in a very particular way, right? It's a xenoestrogen. It mimics estrogen. So for men, we're getting way too much estrogen. For women, they're getting way too much extra estrogen, which is leading to breast cancer, ovarian cancer, right? Hormone disruption, low testosterone. These are all things that are leading to infertility, but other diseases. So... Mm -hmm. Again, not, this is where we do empowering versus overwhelming. You don't need to make all of these changes, but start with your bed. If you're on a budget, go to your bathroom, right? So, so with the bed, it's the mattress. It's the mattress. And and what sort of mattress is it that you would rec or like recommend that would be mm -hmm. not offsetting? So I did a full mattress review on Heal Thyself, talked about the top ones. You want to look for different certifications. Green Guard gold certification means that it's tested for the VOCs, the volatile organic compounds that are coming from conventional beds. And they're low to negligible to none, which is that's a really important certification. The other ones you want to see is GOTS, G-O-T-S or G-O-L-S, GOLS. That's a uh, certification for uh, latex and for cotton. A lot of these natural 
products. These natural beds are made for latex, cotton, um, New Zealand sustainable wool, and um, and what am I missing? And springs. That's it. But if they have all of those certifications, now you know you're in a good place. I never ever knew. Yeah. that your mattress is it could be a big problem this isn't and this is why like it's crazy because we don't feel it like how many have you ever laid on a mattress and the next day been like oh i'm so sick and like i'm having acne breakouts the next day no but at some point you can have mysterious things happening like oh i feel i have a little bit of asthma what's the skin thing popping up man my acne and then it could get worse over the years why can't i have a kid i don't understand wow you know we found a cyst on my breast it can be all breathing in these compounds. So air in the home is so important. Other recommendations, open the windows. Open the windows. On average, the air outside is 10 times less polluted on average than the air inside. It's the other way around. You would think, right? Like, oh, no, the really? air outside is more polluted. No. Indoor air is on average at least 10 times more, but can go up to 100 times more. Why? Because of the volatile organic compounds, right? So not only oh, our bed, from like, right, okay. but think about cleaning supplies. Right. You, you clean, you clean a table, you clean the floor or um, you, you have the cleaners come in and they do something. Right. All of these things are from the rugs, from the lawn that you bring in, that you track in. Right. All of these things play a role. So simple stuff. Ready. Open your windows. Let the air flow. The reason I live where I live is because the windows was the first thing I looked at. Sun coming in and then airflow. When you come into my house, there's there's air always flowing through. Mm -hmm. So even if there is compounds in the air that we're breathing in, a lot of them are leaving, right? Leaving, right. leaving, leaving, being brushed out. Air filter. Get a good quality air filter. Uh -huh. get, a, get, a, get one in your room and get one in the common area. Okay. I never even thought about it before living with Andre and he's got these like fancy ones that are like, yeah, there you go. See? All day. And Andre I'm like, what does this it. thing do? I don't really know what it's uh, clearly a lot. Andre is on it. Yeah. But he's so stuff. on it. I'm so grateful for him. Okay. So <laughs> opening your, your windows free, you can dedicate some funds into getting a good air filter, taking off your shoes before you come into the house. Grandma was right. Your auntie was right. Mama was right. Take off those shoes because there's studies that show if you can track in pesticides, not only bacteria, but pesticides from outside, which are nasty. Like mm. if you're, everyone sprays Roundup on their grass now, right? And we walk, even if we walk our dog. So really important to take off your shoes and not bring them inside, especially if you have a rug or any rugs, never put your feet on the rug with the shoes. Um, what else? Better cookware. If so, uh, put your air filter on, especially, or the hood if you're cooking, because those combustion uh, chemicals can come into the air. So you never want to cook in really poor ventilated space. So open windows if you're really cooking, especially if you love to cook like you do. <laughs> um, those are really, really important ones. And there are a whole nother podcast can be about mold. Mold is a big part of home air quality and can affect a lot of us. I will say a few things about it. Um, 25% of folks can't break down mold toxins. I was one of them. I got super sick with mold. I moved into a place in Venice three years ago. And within two months, my health, I never had health issues, went down so bad that if we were having a conversation, I would forget your name right now on this podcast. Like just brain fog. Brain fog. <laughs> like you, the word recall was the scariest thing because I kind of talk for a living, right? Mm. But um a lot of people, if you look up symptoms of mold, can go head to toe. It's it's so, it, it, there's, it's like candida, right? But it's so large. But a lot of people will start identifying with, wait a minute, I have brain fog. I have poor word recall. Mm. I have uh, excess urination at night, but I'm not diabetic. I have really intense thirst at night, but I'm not diabetic, mm. right? I have some weird skin. I have sinus issues. You got to really start thinking about molds because 25% of people can't break it down. So a family of four, think about a kid having issues and their allergist says, oh no, your kid, look, uh, birch trees came up. That's what it is. Right. And, and, you know, like, you know, just make sure that they take this antihistamine, but that won't solve the problem mm -hmm. if it's ongoing. And if, if there's any mysterious disease that's going on and your doctor cannot put your finger on it, you have to consider mold in the home. You have to consider what's happening at home because Right now, the, the CDC says one out of two homes have mold issues. One Water out of damage, fifty percent of homes. Ah, oh. realistically, what? realistically, that's that's via reports of water damage. It's realistically, it's eighty and ninety percent, right? Because no one's reporting water damage under a sink mm -hmm. because no one's really checking. Mm -hmm. But most homes have some level of water damage. The problem is, is how bad's the water damage, and how sensitive are the people? 
right? But again, a family of four, if your kid keeps getting sick or the dad keeps getting sick and no one can put their finger, think about how you feel when you leave the house. Mm -hmm. If you go on vacation, visit your family, or you do a getaway in Joshua Tree or something, and you start feeling healthy again, and you start, your brain starts feeling sharper again, that's a really telltale sign there's something going on in the home. And maybe it's mold, maybe it's not, but there's, there's something to look at in the air quality of the home. Mm -hmm. Wow, super fascinating. I see, I don't want to overwhelm anyone. And, and I, I feel like uh, all this information can, but think about it this way. There's solutions to everything. Yeah. And you can move slowly on things. Mold is a different situation. Mold, if, if you have a mold problem and someone's really sick, you have to get that remediated. You have to get it checked by a professional, not your landlord who they're going to bring in, right? Because mm -hmm. they, they're not doing the correct testing. It shouldn't do air samples. They should do swab samples in different spaces. Your mold tester should have the of hazmat suit even they're so serious about it but they should be doing moisture meters throughout the house checking where there's behind the wall moisture mm -hmm. drilling making a little hole and doing swabs and taking samples mm -hmm. if they're doing air samples that's it that's nothing because the spores go down to the floor mm -hmm. and that's a problem right because the spores are what's making you sick and they're head they have heavy dense weight mm -hmm. also make sure you're cleaning because mold loves hanging out and those actually chemicals volatile organic chemicals love hanging out in the dust so you want to make sure you're always making sure your place is clean and dust isn't accumulating because when you have a lot of dust, you're breathing in those chemicals and potentially mold. Mm. So get that remediated properly by a professional. I've had mold experts on my show. I stand by a lot of their companies because they're really good. So it's so fascinating to get to see this side of you um, outside of like social setting, <laughs> just like understand that you are a walking library of information. And it really, while you're speaking, I'm just like really feeling knowledge is power, like mm -hmm. really understanding, like when you're knowledgeable about these things, then then you have a personal power and responsibility to be able to shift it into into um, a more aligned way of living for your, your mind, body and spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm also curious, right, with this amount of knowledge, and this amount of awareness, do you find yourself in OCD tendencies of like, everything must be clean? Or like, I, I just had a vision of someone that walks into the house and right. refused to take their shoes off. And they're like, oh, it's fine. And if I had known, like really, you know, what could have been on the bottom of their feet as opposed to being like, well, just don't step on the rugs. Yeah. You know, um, I would have been like, yes, but... I really would like you to take your shoes off, please. I mean, like, it's my home. You know, like, I, I, I feel like that knowledge, then I'm a little bit more like. Eh. That is such a valid point. That is such a valid point. I, okay, so I'll put it this way. When I got really sick with mold, um, I was just starting my podcast and it was really hard for me to remember words like almond or like protein. Like, mm. it's so crazy because I know I know the word, but I can't take, get yeah. it. It's, for me, it was a, a glimpse into what it feels like to have dementia. Cause yeah. it really was really bad aside from me, like losing weight and getting really pale. It messed me up. So yes, I had mold OCD for a very long time. And actually a lot of my close friends are, it's, it's interesting. One of our friends that we know, he's suffering with mold issues since last year. And I went into his home and I go, Hey man, I think there's mold in here. I can smell it. And I don't feel good when I, and every time I come home from your house, I have to have to drink a lot of water and I pee a lot. And he's like, no, no, it's fine. He's starting really sick. And then he, he said, he did a retreat, like a little solo retreat in Joshua Tree. And he's like, I feel so much better. I was like, bro, I'm telling you it's mold. He left, his health started coming back, but then he moved into another place. And I said, don't move there, there's mold. He didn't listen, he got really sick. So he's in that space where he's like, oh my God, any place I go, it's gonna be mold. There's, a, there's, there's two things I'm gonna bring up. First, I really, really stress resiliency. Because if you're resilient, Yes, you can be exposed to mold, but you're going to be okay. You, you'll be better than, than you would if you weren't resilient. But also your cup is bigger, right? So we were talking about cup and that's a good mm -hmm. analogy. Remember I said, if you live in a home with a bunch of toxins, that cup's going to start filling up, mm -hmm. right? And at some point, once it overflows, you might be diagnosed with arthritis. You might be diagnosed with MS. You might be diagnosed with gut issues. You might be diagnosed with cancer. It depends on your constitution. But the resiliency helps not only broaden that cup, but also lengthen that cup. So that's why I'm working to teach people what resiliency means. And there's basic things that we can do that are cheap and affordable to optimize our resiliency. So even if we can't afford right now a new bed, 
or a new rug or a new couch or get mold remediation. We can build our resiliency as much as possible so we can we can handle that as best as possible. So uh, I can talk about resiliency, like things that we can do. But no, where I stand right now, I have a lot of faith in the things that I do. And uh, when I first moved to this new place in Venice, it's so crazy. I'm like, a, you know, like truffle pigs, they could tell you where truffles are. The what? Like truffle pigs, they can sniff and tell you where the truffles are. Uh, they have truffle yeah, pigs. Yeah, yeah. I'm like a mold pig. Yeah. <laughs> I know where there's mold in the home. Yeah. Um, so I, in my home, I would go into the closet and know exactly where the mold use was. Because every time I was going in my closet, I had a musty smell. There was poor air circulation and I was getting that like high feeling. It's like a weird high feeling. It's hard to explain. But if you had mold and you're listening, you know what I'm talking about. Synchronicity would have it. I did a story from my rooftop and someone who was following me goes, oh my God, Dr. G, me and my husband used to live in this house three years ago. Uh, I have to tell you, there was water damage. I go, where? And it was exactly in my closet and it was exactly in the side of my closet where I knew it was on the right side. And she goes, and I go, I, I, I knew it. <sighs> so what was really helpful with that? It was having just a dehumidifier in my closet. Uh, that, that If you go into my closet, it's like an Arizona summer. <laughs> any, any given time, <laughs> morning, morning or night. Actually, actually, if I'm ever really like, like cold or my body feels cold, I go into my closet for a few minutes. <laughs> but the upside is it dried up everything. So mold lives in the conditions where it's really uh, moist. It mm -hmm. has to be moist. Mm -hmm. It's warm, but moist. My closet is warm, but very dry. So that's really helpful. But resiliency is so powerful because now if someone comes into my home with shoes, like I have a few parties every now and then, some of the girls have part of their whole outfit is the, the boots that they have on. Um, I, I'm not going to say take off your shoes, right? But also we clean the house every week. So that's really important for you to know. So let's say you don't want to be OCD about like, okay, don't come in my house without shoes or something like that. Make sure you're just keeping your home clean right? Vacuuming, dusting, mm -hmm. always important to make sure the floors, the rugs, the rugs, the rugs, so important the rugs are cleaned because the rugs are, that's the home where all the crap is. The mm -hmm. mold spores, those volatile organic compounds, they come up, they come down, they're built up on there. And then if you have a kid, if you have a kid, make sure you're cleaning your rug all the time because guess what? The kid is rolling around and their center of gravity is really low. Their face is there. And if you have pets, same thing. If you have a, a, a critter at home, or a child, make sure that you're taking care and cleaning up those rugs consistently. Mm. So those are some things, but I can go into like resiliency, the things that I do to build up that cup. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested to hear. Okay. Like, what's the piece, you know, that, that we can do because it, you've dropped the knowledge and the awareness around these pieces. And then to to feel this, this information and then be like, okay, I'm gonna build my resiliency. I'm gonna make my, my cup mm. bigger. But before we go into that, did you smell any mold in this house? No, I didn't. I, I did a little truffle run when Andre gave me the uh, tour. Yeah. Little little do you guys no. know, my nose was moving. <laughs> my nose was moving <laughs> and everyone <laughs> did, 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 like, like uh, bewitched that show from the 50s. <laughs> and I was sniffing, I was looking around, but this house is fantastic. And I actually mentioned it after I go, there's no mold in here. Um, because I don't know if it's a new build or the guys kept it clean or there's never been water damage, but it's really rare in Venice here mm -hmm. to have a place that is not that, that doesn't have mold damage because mm. almost every home I've been to in Venice has mold damage. Wow. Or water damage that leads to mold, yeah. Why is that? Because we're close to the ocean? Um, well, yeah, so two things. My place was really close to the ocean, so you're getting that marine layer. Right. Um, a lot of places have flat roofs, which are a problem, right? Uh, we're all like, yeah. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of these builds are just poor because let's say, for example, if you're, let's say it starts raining, uh, a lot of places have either their roof is leaking or water's getting into the foundation. Mm. A lot of the places in California have a crawl space too. Crawl mm. spaces are notorious for building up mold. Um, we have one in my, in my home. Not only is it under the home, like if it's like elevated home, but also you can find like little cubbies in your Venice homes and, or a lot of California homes and they have a crawl space. Like the, the, that's where actually all the mold was. So I'll say it really quick. In my old place in Venice, it wasn't a big place. It was actually by my new, where I live now, actually. And um, every time I went to my bedroom, it was bad. I was like, I don't feel good in here. I feel, the air is heavy. I feel really weird. And once a mold guy came, he came into my closet and he goes, 
there's a crawl space in here. He opened the little cubby and it led to a space behind the bathroom, behind the toilet, behind the, uh. the, the bathtub. And it was dark and it was like grungy and it looked like it was wet. And he took all these samples and he's like, look, a week later, he's like black mold was found and black mold was one of the nasty the ones. Worst, right? worst. You have to don't you have to fumigate the whole house. So I just moved. Oh uh, yeah. But all but, that. Yeah. But what what needs to happen is that whole crawl space needs to be opened up, cleaned out completely, gutted. Right. And um so that's that's why a lot of these homes do it's just poor build mm. now. But um but it's something look, every house probably has mold. Most people are resilient to it because it's at a low level. But again, 25% of us can't. And I'm one of them. I have that genetic change. I tested it. And um, it's bad. It can get really bad. If, if this home had a lot of mold, I'd, I'd go home and I'd be like really like drunkish, like buzzed and like cloudy and like, oh, I'm not all there. But my resiliency has been so much better that even if it did have mold, I truly believe in my resiliency right now. All right, so let's go into that topic. Okay. Let's go into resiliency. Is it? Are we? Are we boring? Is this? Is it, I'm fascinated because I feel like a big nerd right now. No, oh okay. my gosh, okay, I cool, love cool. it. Like right. this is fascinating to me because it's it. It feels like you know I I my default predominantly operates in the spiritual realm and um, feeling into uh, into certain unexpressed emotions mm. or um, you know looking at people's hologenetic profiles yes. and the gene keys but this isn't just something that's in my predominant field and also with my audience is you know our archetype attracts the archetype in which people resonate right. with right? right so when I when I I hear your insight and your lens it's it's giving me a whole different look on a world that I have really no knowledge about mm -hmm. um and so where you're you're going deep into the like the facts and the nerdiness and the and, and the cool, information cool. i'm like <laughs> okay so okay. please yeah. know that it is so welcome I here that, and yeah. um i want to hear about resilience okay resilience so the, the way that we can think about resilience is just thinking about the analogy of the cup how do we get that cup wider and bigger right if mm -hmm. we have an eight ounce mason jar how do we have a 32 ounce mason jar right or how do we have a bucket mm -hmm. um so we have to think about the very things that are foundational to our health, which we overlook, which are free. Sleep, okay. Well, what does it mean to sleep, right? A lot of us are like, well, I get good sleep, but, but do you truly feel woken up and re refreshed and rejuvenated? There's a few points to sleep. Um, if you, you can always optimize your sleep, even if you sleep well. So first and foremost, removing blue light after night. That's why I put on those nerdy- So fine. Uh, yeah, the, the, the blue blockers, but really important because it's believed at this point right now through the literature that for every hour um, after sunset that you are exposed to electronic blue light, you, your melatonin production goes down about 20%, right? So wow. imagine three hours, let's say, let's say over here, a sunset is like 7.30, right? 8, 9, 10.30, then we get to bed, 20, 40, 60% of our melatonin goes down. Melatonin is essential, not only for sleep, but it's, it is one of our most powerful antioxidants that we have and it's released when we sleep. Why? Because we're not eating, we're not disrupting, we're not stressed, we're sleeping and our body is utilizing melatonin to help stimulate the immune system, to help fight cancer cells that are growing at night, right? Because we all have cancer cells that are help, it's helping keep us in balance, reducing inflammation, it's, it reduces inflammatory proteins. Melatonin is powerful, okay? so. The question is, how do we optimize melatonin? Uh, well, like that's that's one way. I'm just having like while you're talking, and Andre's like in the background of this podcast. Uh, my appreciation for his nerdy biohacking tendencies. I'm like ah, because I don't know this stuff, right? And while you're talking, uh, I'm like, validated. he's brilliant. His hands are probably he's in been the air on right now. this whole time, right, and right. I'm over here like. <laughs> right, right. It's 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 essential. But, but so I, tell me about my signing. So, so, so the blue blocker is really important. Mm -hmm. um, it, but you want to get good blue blockers. There's good quality ones. You don't want to block all blues. Then, you you? Want to, no, we don't want to walk with hey. all blues, no. <laughs> but, it's a, but your blue blocker, there's actually, you can Google like um, blue blocking color spectrum and you can test your blue blockers and you, it'll, you'll have like a little color wheel and you put them on. And if, if you can't see blue, then you know it's doing its job. So it's really important because that's a quality blue blocker. Um, sleep hygiene. You have to make sure that we're so fucking addicted to our phones. Yeah. I am too. I've, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty as anyone going, I'm turning off my phone at nine o'clock and it's nine 30. I'm laying in bed. Like, 
texting like a teenage girl. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I do it too. But sleep hygiene, if you can turn off your phone at a very specific time and tell your nervous, see, it's all about the nervous system. Your nervous system needs to know it's safe. Your nervous system is always putting out feelers going, is this environment safe? Yes or no. Can I sleep? Is it safe to eat? Is it safe to procreate? All important things that drive life, drive mm -hmm. evolution. Mm -hmm. If we give the signals to our nervous system that the environment is safe, even if the night before you slept and it was safe and it knew it was safe, the next day, it's still checking every day. So you have to give your inputs. So what, that's why sleep hygiene comes in. Turn off your phone, right? Because the phone signals are telling your body it's not safe, right? Because it's causing stress in the body, oxidation. That's why blue, that's why blue blockers help. But the sleep hygiene, whether it's a bath, whether it's stretching, mm. whether it's I chant at night. Mm. Um, sometimes I'll do a little mini meditation if you read, but do something for about an hour and that tells your nervous system, okay, it's everything's good, right? Evolutionarily, we're in a cave, the fire's on, there's no tiger, there's no bear, we can go to sleep. And then that's gonna help set the primer for restorative, rejuvenative sleep. So you wake up and you're like, oh, I feel actually pretty great. This is, that's how we should wake up. We should go, we shouldn't be like, oh, and it takes us an hour and a half to get ready. And then in the meantime, we're drinking coffee. So important. So talk about resilience, it starts with sleep, right? And so does your next day. The next day, go outside, minus, and no, like, aside from the blue blockers, this is free, right? Mm -hmm. Everything else is free. Soon as you wake up, and you want to actually get to bed between like 10, 11, the latest, right? Because it's a really important um, mm -hmm. sliver of time between 10 and 12, where your brain is detoxing all that crap from the day, right? So it, sleep follows very specific steps and the body follows specific rhythms. But that's really important that you get to sleep around that time. And, and notice, if you sleep at one o'clock, but you get eight hours versus 10 o'clock and eight hours, it's a very different energy that you wake up with. Mm -hmm. So try that if you haven't been motivated to do that. Sleep hygiene will help. Waking up in the morning and seeing the sun. It's really important. As soon as you wake up, even if it's a cloudy day, going outside and getting those wavelengths of light, right? Because why? It's actually spiking up your cortisol, which you want in the first 30 minutes of waking up, because that's actually setting you up for melatonin at night, right? Cortisol spikes in the morning and then goes down through the night. And then it's at its, at its lowest and then melatonin antagonizes it. And so it's going up at night, right? So you want melatonin low. That's what wakes you up. Quarter, you, know, you know when you wake up before your alarm and you're like, oh, I feel like an alarm going off. Right. That's cortisol spiking, right? So you want to assist your body in getting into a rhythm. So you'll see resiliency is based on rhythms. Mm -hmm. If you're living in nature's rhythm, your body's going to be more resilient or the optimal resilience that it can be. Nature's rhythm is going to wake you up really right around when the sun comes up or when the, as soon as you can see the sun. And then see the sun, spike up your cortisol, and then put your feet on the ground somewhere. Mm -hmm. So important in the morning to get grounded. And that's cheap. That's free, right? Aside from time to walk to the beach or time to walk to the nearest patch of natural earth. It has to be rocks, dirt, but no, no, no concrete. It has to be natural surfaces. But that's not only anti-inflammatory, right? That's not only going to help stimulate your immune system, reduce your blood sugar. I swear to God, it does. It's so crazy. When I read the studies on grounding, I'm like, how? But I don't understand. But it actually happens through Earth's magnetism. Mm -hmm. You're a conduit and that magnetic field is helping balance those neg it's giving you negative ions to help balance your body. Mm -hmm. But it actually does do that, reduces the blood sugar, right? Reduces inflammation, stimulates the immune system, but also sets your circadian clock. So then you're like, your, your body goes, okay, I know what time it is. The sun is out, the feet are on the ground. I'm getting all the signals I need. Now we're ready for the day. Eat nutrition, right? Eat good nutri nutrition, nutritious food. Plant as much as you can, whatever your diet is. Make sure you're getting all the colors of the rainbow. Mm. So, so important because those are all inputs to the body. The nervous system goes, ah, yes, lycopene. I love this, this antioxidant, right? So, ooh, polyphenols, I love these. But these work in a very particular way in your body. That's why you can't just eat carrots all day and go, I eat vegetables. Or you can't eat spinach all day and go, I eat vegetables. You have to get all of the colors of the rainbow. Every day. So, well, as much as you can. So, Do you eat all the colors of the sometimes, rainbow every day? I try, I try. <laughs> Sometimes I'll eat a bowl of like um, vegan organic um, tricks, which is like all the colors of the rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, get real, real food, right? Eat whole food as much as you can. Really, really important. 
get, you have to get uncomfortable at least once or twice in a day, right? Mm. And this is where my, I do sauna and I do the cold. But those are, again, very important inputs in your body. Those are called her hormetic stresses, right? Hormetic stress, well, it's stress enough in the body that it's not bad. It causes a response that's actually very beneficial, mm. just like exercise. So the next three are getting uncomfortable through exercise, through, 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 but not, we're not talking about like going for a nice walk, which is really nice, but, but your body evolved doing burst exercise, mm. like running after the prey or something, right. Mm. Or running away from just that burst is going to be really important. You want to do that during the day and also making sure that you're making sure you're taking a cold shower or taking, getting into a sauna as much as you can. That discomfort and not being at room temperature is really important stresses in your body, but that's building your resiliency. Mm. Every every time, let's think of your cup, every time you do these things, it just, it widens, it broadens, and it gets longer, but by very little. But the more you do it, the bigger it gets and mm. the faster it gets, mm-hmm. right? And then look at that. So you've woken up. You, first of all, you got a good night's sleep. You've woken up. You've let the, you let the sun hit your eyes, right? You've You've... Uh, ate good food, you had a good breakfast. Now you've done a good workout, a good movement, good movement. You took a cold shower. You stimulated yourself with sauna. The other side is stress. The quickest way to miniaturize your cup is being stressed quick, quicker than anything. I would actually say it's one of the most important interventions, stress. But stress not only is chemical stress from environmental stuff that we're exposed to, which is why I talk about environmental medicine, but it's also the physical stress. So overworking out which a lot of us do. Overworking. Overworking out, right? Like to the point where you're like doing super intense workout five days a week. Guess what? Your cortisol is going to be like, okay, we're super stressed now. And the nervous system go, it's not safe, right? Mm. That's why a lot of men and women who are triathletes or women who have really low body fat, their nervous system goes, we're not ready to procreate. This is not healthy, Mm. right? So don't overwork out. Make sure you find that balance. But stress, stress, stress. I know Andre and you meditate and it's so important every single day to do something that relieves your stress. You have to, because stress will create the inflammatory environment that is reducing your result. It'll you'll go from a mason jar to a shot glass really quick, as if you consistently are stressed. So you have to handle it. Now, stress can be, damn, my boss yelled at me at work. Okay, but look deeper. Is it is it the trauma stress? Is it is did your boss yelling at you remind you of your dad yelling at you? Mm. Right. You have to look deeper because if you're holding in right? Some childhood trauma in the body that's reducing your cup, right? So let's say Mm -hmm. I was just having this conversation with someone. I go, I know you have a shitty relationship with your mom and you have no relationship with your dad, but your resiliency or you overflow, especially with stress really easily. Right. And I, and you can see this because her cup is 50% always, it's always 50% full of stress. Mm -hmm. And all that stress is childhood stuff. So what I'm, submitting to people listening is take the time to look and go, am I actually holding on to things that is causing stress? Even when I'm feel, when I don't feel stress, even when I'm on vacation, is there something in my body that I'm still holding? Because if there is that release of removing that stress from the body, that body healing itself and removing the ego is going to open up, open up your cup so much, spill all that crap out and, and set you to a new tone. And that's so important. So that's we're talking about resiliency and like notice how most of this stuff is cheap. Mm. Most of this stuff is free. Most of this stuff is God given, universe given, whatever it is. And really simple ways, but guess what? We sacrifice sleep when we want to go out socially, mm. right? Oh, we sacrifice working out. I don't have time to work out today. I'm too busy at work. Oh, meditation. Oh, I can't get into it. Like I just, I can't stick with it. But these are the very things that build our resiliency. So we have a lot of a lot of a long, healthy quality life. That's so important. Mm, mm. And this leads into the 40 days of sweat challenge. Right, there you go. There you go. So movement, I see you moving all the time, uh-huh. right? I see you cooking good food, you meditate, you're doing things for your resiliency already. I don't know how you sleep, but really. Amazing. You, you sleep amazing. Every night. Ooh. I sleep I mean, and then dream off off to the ethers. Amazing. And have, I had a dream about Justin Bieber last night. Really? We were homies. You, you and Justin were homies? Yeah, yeah. We were, he makes it like a regular period to my dream today. And I'm like, oh, hey, again. Was he singing you were playing guitar? Huh? Was he singing you were playing guitar? No, he, we were actually, um, we had big rubber rings and we were floating down a lazy river. 
That's amazing. We were just like hanging, you know, it was, it was a vibe. Dreams are fascinating. The symbolism behind it is like crazy. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> I was like, wow, I think I know what it means. It's crazy. We, we like dream in like these weird, like a- a- analogies and I don't really always get them. But when I do get them, I was like, the subconscious oh, is crazy. Oh, it's the subconscious mind playing out. And the crazy thing is that which is, if you look at it from like an alien perspective at night, we we go to sleep and then like our like flesh bubble goes, mm. And then we go into this realm where anything can happen, yeah. infinite things and infinite possibilities. Sim- everything's communicating with us through different symbology. And sometimes we even know we're dreaming and then we we can like play with it and manipulate it the way that we want it to go. And and, it, and then it's it's just like a regular thing that we kind of like downplay the, like the magnitude of us astral traveling mm. every night, whether you remember or not. We're going somewhere else. Um, and and it's almost, for me, as, as fascinating as, as birth, you know? Like, yes, every single person on this planet obviously was born, but the, the fact that we were, like, not a physical thing and then we became a physical thing and then yeah. we were, like, pushed out through the Stargate Enterprise between women's legs, like, and, and just all of a sudden out. we're just, like, here. And it's, like, and like looking at a pregnant woman, like, you have a human growing inside of you literally embryology when i was in, in school learning it i was like i this is something is at work oh, way more than anything going on? i just i just pictured like uh, like a little a little gremlin human like doing like the controls like the joystick and yeah. the computer and it's like now we will develop the ear to do do because i kid you not there's an intelligence at play that is so sophisticated yeah. so elegant so seamless Wow. Which is crazy beyond anything that any engineer will ever create, beyond anything that mm-hmm. a scientific will, a scientist will understand mm-hmm. ever. The more we want to try to understand consciousness and the power, it yeah. just slips, the more it slips to our hand. It's uh-huh. like, it's like, oh, what the heck? I thought I had it. Yeah. You will never have it, right? Because right. we come from the, the, a different frame of mind. But mm-hmm. just to like observe it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like literally just just the power of birth and mm-hmm. a baby growing and then a baby coming out. And you're like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> it's crazy. What is going on? What am I witnessing right now? You didn't have a baby nine months ago. Now you have a child and it lived inside. And of we you. just take it for granted. Right. Because we're just like, oh, she's pregnant. Oh, she had a baby. Let's celebrate yeah. versus like, whoa, let's bring reverence to that process. What the heck just happened? It's like aliens meet human. Like, right. Meow. Right. I, it's 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 fascinating and being human um is such a trip for all of us um and the when you break you know this information down it just for me it just feels like a deeper level of responsibility yeah. and um a real like my heart is super softening to towards andre and his like biohacking and we talked about it the other night him like taping his mouth shut right. and like have breathing through his nose at night helps and like um he's like doing cold showers and i, I i'm like eh, i want to be warm you know? know i'm like know. Eh. and um and He's he, in like before bed, he's like his phone's aside and he's stretching at night. And in the morning, he's meditating every morning. And I'm like so inspired by the people that I live with. And I think that I've also created like a, a narrative of being like, yeah, but where's the magic? You know, like, where's the like, we're going to be out till midnight right, and we're right. partying and with the best of them, right, you know, and like right. this whole glamorous side of it. But to be in a relationship with him for the past, two years and witnessing the exponential amount of growth through the small daily habits, mm-hmm. but being with someone in the long term, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, this really helps. And this really changes the game. And it's bringing a whole new conversation to more like, uh, I filled the archetype of the, the spiritual forest fairy for quite some time, lived mm-hmm. in the cabin, it's like, had dreads and I was like yeah. you know doing the whole thing um and so the merging between the two of us is 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 where spirit meets science is mm-hmm. is where understanding the responsibility of how to actually biohack um our experience for very little next to nothing yeah. um the just knowledge and that's why I just really appreciate your wisdom that you've shared with us today Thank because you. it it's practical it's here and it does come from a place where oh I'm empowered as opposed to I'm overwhelmed because it's infinite. 
Yeah. There will always be another thing we can learn. There's always something always. we can reduce or, or, or understand how to minimize the toxins in our environment. It will never end. But at least we have like, hey, here's a few pieces for me mm-hmm. to start. And with that segueing into the 40 days of sweat challenge that I've created, um, I received when I did my Sadhguru retreat, like the, the download of like, use your social media to inspire people into a healthier way of living and operating and, and welcome them into free challenges mm-hmm. where they can create an accountability online. And so I'm in the gym and I post videos and then it's like 40 days of sweat day two, you know, and whoever wants to join is completely free. Come join and move your body with me. And then we'll do 40 days of devotion. We did 40 days of devotion, which was 40 days in front of an altar and being in prayer in the morning. And then, um, the next one I was thinking of was 40 days of service. Ooh. So like 40 days of giving something to someone, whether yeah. it's, um, writing a beautiful letter and sending it out or paying for someone's coffee, um, or tea, you know, when you're at the shop that's behind you or so like 40 days of like giving back or service. Uh, but right now we're in 40 days of sweat and, um, you Dr. G have been inspired by the 40 days of sweat have, and you're coming to the gym. With I'm coming tomorrow. to the gym. You know, look, I, I, have, <laughs> I have a group of friends who go to the gym over here and I've seen it over the years. I'm like, Hey, I'll make my way. But, um, but I found, I also have this I'm getting back into my sleep rhythm. Mm-hmm. I'm getting back into my rituals consistently. You know, mm-hmm. when you have a partner, mm-hmm. it's very easily, it, you can very easily just start losing track of like all yeah. the things you need to do. Right. And you build this resentment to yourself. And sometimes it comes out as resentment to your partner, but it's really just for yourself. Yeah. And, um, and I found, I was like, I have not been working out as much as I want to. Mm-hmm. I'm not in shape like I used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been dedicating myself the past two weeks to like setting up a program for me. Right. So I'm excited because I talked to you, I'm going to be, I'll be there on Monday. I'll be there on Friday. We'll, I'll, I'll do the cardio. I'm really want to do that step. I remember when I was really into fitness, I was doing a lot of the step up, mm-hmm. like the step machine, the mm-hmm. stair master. Oh my God. Like it wins you and your heart's beating, but you're building up that booty too. Oh, I call it the stairway to heaven, the stairway to, the heaven. Stairway to nowhere and everywhere and everywhere. Oh. That's, and that's, and I'll, and, and I'll be right there next to you, like Sweat listening band. to my YouTube videos. Yeah. Sweatband. <laughs> Listen, I already, I'm all about style and fashion. So I already got my sneakers for the gym. <laughs> I, I got my outfits ready for the gym. You know, it, it's gotta be an experience and my, my soul loves the fashion side. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be going, uh, yeah. And I'm doing boxing once a week and I have like, where are you going? Club. Well, I have a trainer, my friend, uh, over in Marina Del Rey, I go to his uh, uh, building, but there's, but the place, uh, he's from Box and Burn, the guy over here in Santa Monica, really good boxing gym. But I found that boxing really challenges your hand-eye coordination. Mm-hmm. You're not only building cardio, but like, yeah, you're dodging punches because you want to <laughs> get hit, but also you're, you have to land the punch. It's really fantastic workout. I would, mm-hmm. If you haven't boxed the viewers and listeners, try it out. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just doing some like weight bearing exercises and man, I'm on the, my mental health feels good. I feel sharp. Yeah. Uh, it's been the rituals though. The rituals have been everything. You know, I put my feet on the ground every morning. I go to the beach. Mm. Um, every morning. Every morning. You're at the beach. And I'm the guy who's talking to himself, saying, "I am creating, experiencing, and knowing myself to be open. I am creating, experiencing, knowing myself to be love." Like, and oh, really? people, yeah, people are looking at me, but I'm like, I don't care. Like, yeah, I'm just talking. Like, it's Venice, Venice Beach. It's Venice right. Beach. Because so I'm wondering. I'm like, do they think I'm just a crazy man here? Um, You're just who the cares? new default. Yeah, just my <laughs> default. So I'm like at the shoreline, just speaking aloud to the ocean, like. <laughs> What I'm creating as this avatar called that. Christian. So it's really powerful. Yeah. But after that, I'm walking home and I have my matcha cups in my hand and I'm buzzing. And I'm like, this is what I needed. This is the mental, the mental, emotional, spiritual side. Now I'm doing the physical. I thought my cup was big. The resiliency is even getting mm. bigger. And that that's there for everyone listening. Right. right. We can all move. We can all take time to like do rituals. We can all journal. We can all drink matcha. We can yeah. all do all these things that are, mm. you know, fairly affordable. And build our resiliency cup. Mm, super inspiring. Super inspiring. I feel like I want to watch this podcast back multiple times and sit with a notepad and pen. And like, right. right. And then like create a new structure of what it is. And yeah. also probably start listening to Andre a little bit more <laughs> and being even more inquisitive. But hey, babe, why do you have tape on your mouth? I'm supposed to laughing at him <laughs> when he turns over to me to kiss me goodnight. And I'm like, and he's like, 
I, I do the same thing. I wake up, I wake up in the morning. I'll go, I'll go lean over to kiss Sonia with my, with my mouth tape. And she's like, stop, take it off. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, it like, smell. Yeah. It's all like, it's all like gushy and uh, yeah. No, but, <coughs> but actually Andre's really onto something. The mouth tape is fantastic. Mouth breathing is a big issue as to why people don't get deep sleep. Mm. Um, and I just did a show with a professional, uh, well, professional. He's a, a medical doctor. He's an ENT, but he's he's like the top of the top when it comes to disordered breathing. Mm. And if you have children, look if they're breathing correctly. There's six points that he talked about on my show. It's called a fairest six. Look at your child and see if they're breathing correctly. Because if they're not, that can lead to issues in their teens which lead to compound issues in adulthood, which lead to compound issues in middle age. It can all start just with disordered breathing. And you can actually see the face of, face of a child who's not breathing well, usually more droopy. It's usually their eyes are droopy, right? Their chin is retracted in, right? Their face is longer. And they're, you could see they're just like mouth breathing a lot. And it could be, could be due, due, due to structural abnormalities. But the time to catch it is now, for, especially if you have a kid. Uh, because it can change their life, right? Mm. Breathing correctly is, is everything, right? We talked about the, um, the elements, right? And wind and right. air, right? Mm. Breath is so important to all health, which is part of like, I'm still building the resiliency, but like breath, breathing and breath work is important, but you have to properly breathe. Mm. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. I went to the, I went to, it's called uh, the Breathe Institute. It was in Westwood where this doctor, Dr. Zaghi, they took an x-ray of my mouth and anatomically, I, I mean, I had, a, I had really crooked teeth when I was little and I had all the retainers and all the palate expanders. And what he showed, what it showed is that my tongue just like is lazy and it just like retracts down. And when I sleep, the tongue will like retract and close my airway. So it's, let's say we have hundred percent airway. Now it's like 40% just because my tongue is not at the roof of the mouth where when you sleep, it should be suction on the roof of your mouth to optimize air and breath uh, so you have a deeper sleep. Mm -hmm. The moment you don't, your brain says, uh, what's going on? Okay, I guess I can't be fully in rest mode. I have to be a little bit awake because if something goes on, I gotta wake the body up and I've actually choked on my own tongue like, and I will get up. So uh, they gave me tongue exercises. Just like I go to the gym, I do tongue exercises while I'm driving. At the face gym? Yeah, <laughs> so one time I'm doing tongue exercises and I'm at a red light and I look to my left and a lady's staring at me and I'm still doing them. And it's, it looked very What well, Can you very show me rude. what it looks like? Well, there's one where it goes like um, left to right. So I was like this. <laughs> but I'm still looking at the lady because I don't want to break the, I'm like, I'm like 16, 17. I look at her and she's staring at me and I'm doing this tongue movement. <laughs> and then she's like, what the hell? And then, you know, like close her window and leaves. And I was like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but I get them in. But but the, the whole point of saying is this, is uh, I actually would listen if everyone who's viewing or listening, go, go to the Heal Thyself and listen to Dr. Zaki's uh, whole podcast on it because it's so important to catch early on if your child is not breathing well. Because mm -hmm. if they're not, it can lead to so many issues, even neurological like ADHD, he was saying is directly connected to poor breathing, especially disordered sleep. Mm -hmm. um, Many things, many things, yeah. asthmas, uh, even tension. If you have tension in your neck and it's not going away with massages, it could be postural, could be weak muscles, but it also could be absolutely because your body is trying to accommodate to open up your airways. So if you have a forward head tilt and tension and your shoulders are up, it's because you're creating this airway. Your body's smart. It's trying to breathe. All, the body's trying to survive, so it's trying to breathe. So if you have poor posture, it might not only be you on your phone, but it might be you just haven't been breathing well since you were a kid. And that can, there's ways to correct that. So I brought that up because it was a recent podcast, but it's so important. I mean, I feel like, I feel like, it, oh, well, if you didn't have a podcast, I'd be like, you should have a podcast right, <laughs> because right. you have so much wisdom. Um, and, uh, any, any direction that we're going to go into, um, I feel like you just like open that filing cabinet. Um, and so if anybody that's, that's, that's listening to this podcast, um, if they want to find you and they want to, um, uh, be able to peel back the more mm. layers and um listen to your podcast and stay connected with you online how are they going to find you and um, what's the name of your podcast and nice. if you could just like brrr. okay cool it is uh at dr.christian.gonzalez with a z at the end gonzalez and on there i post clips from the podcast every week usually from me usually from the guests it's called heal thyself there's a link in the bio to heal thyself we've done 122 shows so far wow 
over the past two years. And the structure is usually me talking for about 20 minutes about a topic. Right. We get to, and anything like I love talking about anything. Right. The filing cabinet. The filing cabinet opens. <laughs> Uh, some shows, not all, I'll do a product review. So I'll, I'll go over like the best. So this tomorrow I'm doing the best cacaos. We've called companies up. We've gotten their third party testing. What is, even if you're going to Whole Foods, is that really a good cacao or can, or heavy metals kind of high and can we do better by that? So I, I bring light to companies that are doing the best of the best mm. with all things like from ketchup to, to matcha, to cacao, to protein powder, mm. to collagen powders, every single thing. I've, I've covered most of the big things. Now it's just like a matter of like updating okay. them. Mm -hmm. um, and then we always pretty much have a guest. Almost every show has a really, really high quality guest talking about physical, mental, emotional, spiritual health. Mm -hmm. As you're going to be on, so mm -hmm. we can talk about all your other stuff. But um, <laughs> I'm very proud of the podcast because it's heart centric, right? Mm -hmm. When you lead with heart, it leads to incredible results. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, if people feel when they don't even feel the word, sometimes they feel like the energy behind those words. Mm -hmm. And I felt that I've, that's how I've showed up on a lot of my shows. And as a result, it's grown, right? Mm -hmm. And we have awesome sponsors who I believe in, yeah. who I don't, we don't need to have them. I believe in them. I want to bring them to light. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's what we can create when we're in our power. So I very much, so I'm super proud of it. And um, building up in, in my website is, uh, it's brand new. It's Dr. Gonzalez, Dr. Gonzalez, uh, dot com. I think. And <laughs> on there is a newsletter that you can subscribe to where I have weekly challenges. I talk about my, my top five or top three of the week, all the, all the good stuff, a bunch of eBooks coming out, man, I'm busy, mm. but I stay grounded. Mm. Stay resilient. Stay resilient. <laughs> so good. Thank you so much for oh. coming on this podcast, blessing us with, with the, the greatest gift we can ever give anybody is our time and our presence. So I'm just so grateful for you showing up today and sharing a cup of mushroom tea. Um, not psychoactive, just a heads up. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, that's what I think. And then all of a sudden I'm just like, yeah, yeah, like <laughs> is it the mold or is it the psychedelic? I don't know. <laughs> I'm really buzzing on this. <laughs> a little bit of both. <laughs> but thank you uh, for having me here. So like, yeah. I really, uh, appreciate your work. You know, you've even our conversation we had at this table and, or even before that, the, the dinner we had before that and not at this table, we learned, I learned so much more about what you do and it's so powerful because it is needed. And the way that you approach not only with heart centric, but just the powers you've been given to mm -hmm. tap into things. It is like life changing for people in your mm -hmm. programs that you talk about. Mm -hmm. Like, man, I want to get Sonia on that program. Yeah. Like I talked to her, I was like, you got to do the program because it is true life changing stuff. So yeah. I believe so much in the work you're doing oh. and to have a platform where people can hear what you're doing and getting guests in here. It's like, what, it, like amazing technology oh. and spirit. I was like, this is life. It's living, you know, yeah. I feel great. Oh. I think it's the mushrooms. <laughs> it's the mushrooms. He's excited. The mushroom it's working. Too. Thank you, Blue, for having me. <laughs> So grateful, brother. So appreciate you. And I'm excited to come on your podcast. All right. Very Heal soon. thyself. Heal thyself. So all of you beautiful bluebirds, we've got downloaded with all of the codes today with Dr. G himself. So this, in the show notes, there will be all of the ways to connect with you. Um, so definitely check him out, send him a message, interact and, um, and absorb as much information from him as possible because you highlighting um, companies that really actually give a shit will revolutionize the planet and it is revolutionizing the planet. So thank you for the work that you're doing. Doing. It's so powerful. It's so needed and truly an honor to have you. And to all of you beautiful bluebirds, if you're watching this and you're feeling inspired, you feel like somebody could really benefit from this podcast, then please go ahead and share it on your Instagram stories. Tag both of us in it so that we can repost because we can only reach so many people with our following. But when all of you share, then we can reach a broader audience. And this is just getting this information out there because ultimately knowledge is power and it's extremely powerful when we can really start taking responsibility of how we navigate through our media reality with with no resources necessary but just awareness and so we're bringing that into this space and so share 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 and um dr g and i are going to do a quick little stick a little lip for patreon after this mm -hmm. um and so if you're not a patreon member the link is in the bio and you can come join the patreon the blue ones over there which is supporting the podcast to stay alive and continuing to produce free content for the world and everyone in between on the world. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, blessings, blessings, blessings. May you feel seen and loved and supported and held in your moment and in your day. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bless, bless. Thank you. Amen. <laughs>